Hey, what's up guys? Nick the Informative Fisherman here. And today I had kind of a creative idea to do a new episode for you guys. I'm out here sitting in our new Hughes Craft uh, from Boat Country, the new Sea Runner, the 2015 model that they got me hooked up in here, my new Garmin units and all my goodies, just after a trip and we thought, you know what? Why don't we ever take viewer call-in questions? So instead of going through my voicemail process and getting transferred over to me, I'm going to post on my Facebook right now to have viewers call me up and I'm going to answer their questions for you guys and hopefully you can pick up a lot of uh, extra insight from the questions they that might ask me. So I'm going to go ahead and post this right now and let's take some calls. Post it. Woo! Don't... Okay, hang on, boy. That's a big one. Big boy. Holy. Formative Fisherman, this is Nick. Hey, Nick, this is Ivan from Stockton. Hey, Ivan, How how, how's it going, man? Not too bad, not too bad. So I've been watching your videos here for quite a few uh, weeks here, uh, going on actually months. Nice. And, uh, you know, I'm trying to get some, uh, I'm trying to get into bass fishing. Mm -hmm. and, uh, I just recently became a boat owner here the last uh, year, and uh, I don't have a, a, you know, an actual bass fishing boat. So I was wondering if you had any pointers on, you know, somebody who's new at, uh, you know, attempting bass fishing, and uh, especially in the California Delta where the current, you know, is always pulling you away. Right. Without having a trolling motor, you know, some of the tips on, on being able to hit those areas, you know, especially with, you know, with low water levels. So basically what you're going to be stuck to is spot fishing. So you can't really move down the bank much without a trolling motor. What you can do is you can actually get back into the sloughs, for example, like a 14 mile slough or disappointment slough where there's a lot of flats. The water in those flats ranges from, you know, three to four feet deep. And the benefit to not having a trolling motor, well, not a benefit, I would say one of the things you can do without having a trolling motor is you can drift across these flats and you can throw topwater baits like buzz baits, or you can even cast swim baits because a lot of the time, this time of year in the fall, the shad are going to be moving up onto those flats to feed. The bass and the stripers will be chasing them on the flats. So you can cast like uh, five or six inch kicker minnow swim baits on little jig heads. Um, you can also work uh, buzz baits on top. You can work prop baits. Um, you can work uh, walk the dog baits. Are you familiar with that? Uh, I've been... I've been looking around and I, I have come across them. I'm not too familiar, but uh, I'll definitely look into that a little further. So you're in Stockton, you said, right? Yeah. So this is what I'll suggest. Go over and launch out of like Paradise Point right there off of, uh, what is okay. that? Uh, eight Mile? Yeah, Eight Mile Road. Yeah, eight mile. Go launch out of Paradise and pull right out there. That's Disappointment Slough right there. You're going to see a lot of shallow okay. flats where the grass is almost touching the surface of the water. The current's not going to be very strong in those areas. What I want you to do is I want you to go pick up like a uh, Persuader buzz bait or a DNM buzz bait and pick up in the white color right now because they're chasing shad around and stick yourself a white horny toed frog on the back of that thing and keep casting on like mono or braid and keep casting across those flats and reeling and I promise you, you will smack a big one. Perfect. I'm going to definitely try that. I'm, I'm trying to get out there this weekend. Make sure to go check out my uh, introduction to bass fishing video if you haven't had a chance to watch that one. I, I have. I've actually gone through that one. I've even got, I was watching, uh, just again today, I was watching your uh, Picking the Right Lures uh, video as well. Fantastic. And uh, I've, I've watched, uh, yeah, I've, got, I've gone through a lot of your videos. Actually, your, your, you know, your channel is very informative, like you say. You know, it's, it's very beneficial for somebody who's trying to get into it more like I am. Uh, like hopefully my next run is also going to be Freeport area. Awesome, but, uh, man. You know, I'd attempt that, that salmon as well. I would wait about two more weeks on that or for our first rain. Hey, I appreciate you calling in, brother, and keep me posted on how you do. No problem. We'll do it. Thanks, mate. You All have right. a great one. Thank you. You too. Thank you. Bye. Nice call. Oh. You had it. You're killing me, Smalls. You had that one. You didn't have it. Keep working it just like you're doing. There you go. Double. All right, guys. Now, so in between the viewer questions calling in on my phone there, I want to give you guys some awesome fishing tips that people ask me a lot or never were aware of that 
could really cost you on the water or save you a lot of money. Uh, first ones first here is, I see guys tear plastics all the time and throw them away. You know you could fuse these things back together. You could basically plastic weld with just a butter knife and a lighter. I'm going to show you right here. Take a look at this big cut. The only thing I'm going to do, and a lot of the time if you're at home and you got a whole bunch, uh, you know, you can take a candle or a little torch to heat the tip of your butter knife. Uh, but when I'm on the water, I just carry a lighter. It's a heck of a lot easier. So let's go ahead and heat the tip of this knife. And I'll try not to drop this in my lap. I know it might be entertaining for you guys, but not me. I'll be the one squealing. So I just want to get it nice and hot. And of course, with a torch or a candle, it would be a heck of a lot easier at home to do this. But you can see it's getting real hot there. Oh yeah, getting real nice dark on that knife. So I'm going to go ahead and set the lighter to where I'm not going to light anything on fire. And I'm going to take the worm here. I got real shaky hands. so Let's get it in there. Get both sides nice and melted. And the only thing I'm going to do, once I get it nice and melted, is I'm going to hold that worm together like that. And I'm going to basically count to about 15 seconds in my head. Once that 15 seconds is gone and passed, uh, the worm should have fused itself back together. The only thing you're counting for or waiting for is that plastic to cool down. Once that plastic cools down, that worm's going to, you know, fuse back to itself. There you go. Your worm's fixed just like that. So instead of throwing out a Senko or a stick bait or a creature bait when you're flipping and punching where you're going to burn through a lot of money, you know, that's a real simple fix right there. If you're a wacky rigging, you could slap that back together and you have a perfectly good working worm. If I'm taking amateurs out in my boat, I always have a big old bag of used plastics. Um, if it doesn't matter to me, there's no money on the line, I'll be using the used plastics myself. But that works real easy, very inexpensive, and it's going to save you a lot of money. Hang with us, guys. We'll be right back. Attention Northern California anglers, have you been to Boat Country in Escalon? With one of the largest selections of welded aluminum fishing boats from Wellcraft, Low, and Hughescraft, chances are they've got the right fishing boat for you. And did I mention they have a full service center to take care of all your boating, repair, and maintenance needs? If you're a boat owner or just looking to become one, you owe it to yourself to check these guys out. Visit BoatCountryUSA.com or stop on by. I'll see you there. I'm sure you've already heard of the Miller Punch Weight for penetrating the heaviest cover with ease for those big old bass. And have you heard of the Red One trolling motor assist cable to either add on or replace those chintzy ones that they come with? You have now. And tired of switching in between split ring tools or breaking off fingernails? We'll grab a Red One wedgie and it'll handle all those bad boys with ease. Visit RedOneSystems.com. Did you know that Beeline makes specialized lines for all your fishing needs? From the super strong, abrasive resistant CXX or the low stretch, super stealthy CX Premium. Or maybe you're looking for invisibility or super bite detection with Beeline's 100% fluorocarbon. No matter what your needs, Beeline's got it covered. To find out more, visit Beeline.com. Beeline, baby! Hey sportsmen, have you ever wanted an all-in-one cleaning tool for small game or fish? Well look no further, the Sportsman Field Tool offers an all-in-one stainless steel construction with all the bells and whistles. From a fillet knife, snip, snub knife, gut rake, and a scaler in its indestructible case, you really can't go wrong. Check your local retailers or visit sportsmanfieldtool.com. Ever tried pulling a planer board next to your boat when trolling or fishing from a swift current bank? If not, you're missing out on one of the most phenomenal fish catching machines on the market today. With Yellowbird planer boards pulling your lines perpendicular to your boat, you can't help but catch more fish. Find out more by visiting www.yellowbirdproducts.com. We're calling a listener back. We just missed the call. Jake. Hey Jake, this is Nick of the Informative Fisherman. Did I just miss your call? Oh yeah, man, a couple of times. <laughs> Sorry about that. We were on the other line. Hey man, I'm an Air Force guy. You know, do a couple of weeks ago about you know where to take my kids. Uh, yes, yeah, I'm very familiar. Actually, I I was so far behind on emails. I'm really glad you called. So where are you located again? You're over by the Air Force Base by Travis. You said. Yeah, yep, I'm over, uh, I live right on Travis. I'm trying to think what the nearest lake is for you guys over here, because uh, this time of year the bait fish start schooling up pretty thick in all the lakes, and uh, a lot of the time that will conjugate, conjugate a lot of the pan fish into the certain coves and around the marinas. So where, where do you like okay. to go out? Well, I've been, uh, probably most often I've launched now at Rio Vista um, at the Sandy Beach uh -huh. uh, launch there. Okay, have you guys tried bait fishing for the stripers? I have. I've tried bait fishing for the stripers in the Sassoon, uh, like in the sloughs a little bit, and uh -huh. uh, I haven't. I haven't tried bait fishing out of Rio Vista yet. I've been 
down there trying to catch a salmon. Uh, ah. But, uh, yeah, if you bait, yeah, if you bait, bait, if you bait fish for the stripers right now, you should knock them dead. There's a ton of them over there. You you just probably need to watch my video on bait cast, uh, bait dunking for delta stripers, where I show the brain rig with the chicken liver. Are you familiar with that one? Yep, yep, watched that one a couple of times. If yeah. you, if you go out there and do that this time of year, you should knock the stripers dead. Um, the one thing you really okay. want to do if you take the kids out with you, because Rio Vista can get real windy this time of year, is uh -huh. try to either take them up more towards Liberty Island where you get a lot more of the wind breaks and you can get out of that rougher okay. water. Sweet. Right off all that Liberty Island stuff over there, huh? You got it. Even the Rio Vista area where the power lines are right there is usually really good, but the wind can pick up fast. So try to treat Liberty Island area as a nice fallback. I'll try that. I'm going to go. I'm trying salmon fishing again this weekend, taking one of my boys out. The other kids have got plans. But, um, well, there you go. We'll, we'll try it. <laughs> well, I need some result pictures, so make sure you send me some results. Dude, I totally will. If I did anything, <laughs> I watched just about every video on your, uh, on your channel. Hey, that brings up another question for you, man. i got a suggestion. For you. Sure. I don't know if you're open to suggestions. I, I'm always open have to ever, suggestions. Have you ever thought about making an app? We're actually yeah. in the we're in the process of making the app, and that's for everybody else watching right now. If you stay up to date on informativefisherman.com, you can guys you guys can actually sign up to be the beta testers for Ask If. And if you're familiar with iPhones with Siri, where you could ask her questions. Ask If yeah. is going to be me answering your questions, but in fishing video related. So you ask the question, and it'll populate the video for you. Yeah, yeah. I'm, uh, I'll try to beat fishing on Saturday if that uh, if salmon don't play right for us. So. Well, awesome. you got to let me know how it goes. Thanks, man. All, All right. Nice talking to you. Okay, now one of the more common things that I'm hearing with bass fishermen who were punching or heavy flipping or frog fishing with braid is that they find that they're breaking 50 and 65 pound line and they can't figure figure out what that is if you hop on fishing forums you're going to see a million different things about um it's your tungsten weight breaking it and yeah that can happen but most tungsten weights on the market today the guys have them polished out or have sleeve inserts what's actually happening more often than not is the way you set the hook okay or guys a lot of guys in bass fishing, they have their drag cranked all the way down. We forget a lot of the time when we're flipping or punching in bass fishing, that drag still can be utilized. And with our braided lines, we do need to use it. So what happens is guys are cracking the whip. And when I say that, let's say I flipped out there and I had a little bit of slack in my line and I, I felt a boom, and then I just, uh, and that slack, bam, cracked the whip. This is 50 pound braid I have on here, okay? And braid knots is where they break. The knot of the braid will break or it'll slip through. So I'll tell you how to prevent that in a second. So 50 pound braid, 20% is around your breaking strength of your knot for your braid. So you take 50 pound braid, let's just call it, um, you know, 35, 40 pounds of pressure that it's gonna take to break this 50 pound braid on a hook set. If you just go like that, that is a heck of a lot of pressure, okay? And you don't think cracking the whip on a fish is gonna get that line to break? Sure it is. You got a fish that's pulling the opposite direction. You got forceful mats under there. You got a short line, you have zero stretch. You can easily cause that amount of pressure and get that braid to break. And I'll tell you why this stands true. A lot of the time, if you hang up your bait in a mat or on a tree limb and you start pulling that braid, you can pull like mad. You can pull with 50 pounds of pressure and this thing's not gonna break because it's not an impact. An impact is way harder. If you slowly come up to hit your head on something, it doesn't hurt, does it? But if you stand right up, it makes a heck of an impact. That's because you're throwing your weight into the object. So instead of cracking the whip, if you see the frog blow up, reel down to where you feel them and pull back, pull tight. Just lean into them. Lean, turn your body and lean into them instead of 
cracking the whip on that fish. What's going to happen is you're going to let that braid do the work and drive those hooks and you have zero stretch. Even at a full distance cast, you still basically have zero stretch. So all you got to do is reel into them when you feel them, then lean into it. A lot of the time you're going to give the fish a better opportunity to eat that bait a little bit better. They're not going to deject the bait in less than a second's time that it's going to take you to reel into them and lean. So with your braid, that's what you want to do. Uh, another thing, longer tag ins with your braid. A lot of the time that braid is also not fastened all the way. A lot of people are not really good at fastening braid knots. So a lot of the time when you crack that whip, that knot fastens a little bit more, which causes another impact. So leave a longer tag in or grab your tag in once you fasten a palomar down with a pair of needle nose and give it a couple good little pops like that to make sure that knot fastens better and you're also going to have less break offs that way. So a lot of the time when you're fishing the exposed jig heads on swim baits like this, people when you're when they're fishing for smaller stripers, a lot of the small stripers are tail grabbers. They're going to come up and bam, bam, or they'll slash and they'll bump your bait. And if you set the hook all the time, it's going to pull your swim bait down. It's going to tear it up. A lot of the time to prevent that, you could put crazy glue. But as you're fishing, the one thing you really want to keep in mind, let's say I cast out here, okay, and I'm bringing it in at a good pace here and I feel boom, don't set the hook, keep reeling. Boom, keep reeling. A lot of the time if they grab the tail and you keep reeling, it'll pop out of their mouth like a natural fish getting away. If you keep reeling until the fish actually loads up on the rod, then set the hook, you won't tear your swim baits and it's much more natural for that fish to grab onto that bait and feel it try to get away and then for them to choke it back down deeper. That's a lot more natural for them than it pulling out of their mouth at 30 pounds of pressure because a little minnow can't do that. So a lot of the time when you go to do that big snapping hook set and it comes out of their mouth, a lot of the time that'll spook that fish and they'll turn off. Rather you start cranking down and it surges out of their mouth, that's natural for them and they'll come back and get it or they'll choke it down deeper and you'll find your hookup ratios way higher. Hang with us guys, we'll be right back. Have you had the opportunity to try out the only waterproof, near weightless, shapeable, hands-free LED light on the market? That's right, I'm talking about the Lure Viewer, the most versatile, multi-functioning LED light available. Choose from its alligator clip or the super strong rare earth magnet that best suits your needs. I guess the only question is, how do you Lure Viewer? Been thinking about trying out kayak fishing or already into it and just want some sick upgrades for your rig? It's time to check out the Headwaters Kayak Shop. Come pick the brains of their knowledgeable staff and make sure to ask about their awesome demo program to find the right kayak for you. Or stop in and rent one with Lodi Lake right down the street. The Headwaters Kayak Shop fits all your yakking needs. Tell them if sent ya. Have you been to RustyLures.com? Did you know they offer free shipping on anything over $29.99? And with all the latest and greatest in bass fishing gear from punching tackle, umbrella rigs, swim baits, and you name it, there's really no reason for you not to be getting the best deal online today. So go to www.RustyLures.com. Did you ever wish for an RC boat when you were a kid? And do you have a passion for fishing? Well, guess what? It's time to do them both at the same time. With RCFishingWorld.com's RC Fishing Pole, it's time to be a kid again. So visit www.rcfishingworld.com today. I got a shotgun, a rifle, and a four-wheel drive. All right, here we got another caller. Oop, there, I got you on speaker now, my bad. Informative Fisherman, this is Nick. <laughs> yeah, uh, I'm wearing rattle traps or lipless cranks, but I can't find them any, the anywhere on the box. Ah, uh, lipless crankbaits, okay. Well, all lipless crankbaits are designed to sink. So what you want to do is if you're on the bank or in a boat, what you want to do is you want to drop it down in the water in front of you and basically count how fast it seems to fall. So if it looks like it falls a foot within a second, you know, so you can cast out there and you think it's, you know, 10 foot deep where you want to catch your bass, you can cast out there and you can count to 9 or 10 and then start to reel it in. If, if you're just reeling it in nice and smooth, the thing will hold at that depth. But as long as you're letting it sink, it'll just keep on dropping down there. Oh, I got you, I got you. Yeah, so a lot of the time, if you're bass fishing with a lipless crankbait, a lot of the time what we're trying to do is we're getting it down just to where it's touching the top of the grass, and then we're reeling it there. Because we know those bass are sitting down there in those, gra in those grass lines, and we want the lipless crankbait to come right over their head 
Which which bait did you get? I'm looking at the uh, red eye uh, strike king. The red eye. One. Ah, the strike king. Uh, the red eye shad. Yeah, the KVD model. The cool yeah. part about that bait is when it drops, it has a shiver. So a lot of the time you can yo-yo that bait, meaning lifting your rod tip up and then letting your rod tip drop back down and it'll yo-yo that bait up and down. The red eye shad's a little bit different than the other lipless crankbaits as you can reel it a little bit faster and it won't roll over so it's really good for burning it in and you can get a good strike like that or ripping it up and down like a yo-yo and that'll get a lot of strikes too. So that's a really good bait. You still there with me? Yeah, yeah. Awesome. What's that? So a square bill, you said? Yeah. So a square bill crankbait, if you're trying to fish it under the dock, basically you want to cast to the side of the dock and then get your rod tip down under. Uh, you don't you won't want to cast too close to the dock with a square bill as it has two treble hooks and you're going to snag the dock. So you definitely uh, you just want to cast to the side and try to bring it by. Um, if it's a shad color square bill, you're more than likely going to get bit around docks like that because a lot of the bait fish suspend around the docks. But if it's a crawdad color, I would fish it more around rocky banks or shallow rocky points. Um, you know what they call rip wrap. That's much better for square bills. Uh, the rip wraps really good for them. Uh, round timber, big logs or wooden stumps, rip wrap. Um, all that's really good for your square bills. Bouncing off stumps, bouncing off logs, bouncing off rocks, and that'll get your a lot of your uh, bass to strike like that. But you can fish it around docks just as well. But I would suggest more of a bait fish color if that's what you have. And if you have a crawdad color, I would fish it more about around the rocky areas. Oh, perfect. Yep. So what you can do is that most square bills are designed to run shallower than about five feet of depth. Because a lot of people don't know a square bill cannot run really deep. That's why you have those rounder bills when you're getting down deeper. So um, basically with your rod tip down pointed at the water when you tr retrieve it, that's going to get your square bill down deeper. You always want to bump objects when you're retrieving a square bill. Once you bump the object, stop reeling for about a half a second and then start reeling again. What that's going to do is it's going to allow the square bill to float up and then come back over that structure without snagging it. And when you run it into the structure or cover, that's also going to trigger those bass to attack it. Okay. So hopefully those tips were able to help you out, man. Did you get some good tips there? Yeah, man, I appreciate it. All right, man. Thanks for calling in. What's your name? Uh, Omar. Thanks for calling us, Omar. We'll talk to you later, man. Bye. All right. Bye. Well, that was pretty awesome of the callers to call me in. Uh, you know, I didn't have much time to uh, take calls today. But hopefully if you guys like this, we'll do this a whole lot more often. Uh, make sure to go to informativefisherman.com and join my emailing list. In that case, if a new episode comes out, it'll go directly to your inbox. Um, subscribe to the show, guys, here on YouTube. Hope you guys appreciate this film. I'm going to do a whole lot more for you. we got another salmon jigging episode coming up. A whole lot of steelhead episodes. A lot of crazy things to come on the show. So I appreciate you guys watching. Best of fishing.